Most popular video editing platforms out there these days are more than capable of turning out professional looking real estate video. Arguably two of the big dogs are Adobe Premiere Pro and Apple Final Cut Pro X. <laughs> Hi, I'm Grant, and I actually had a copy of Adobe Premiere back in the early 2000s when it was actually just Adobe Premiere before they added Pro to the name, and I hated it. Now you have to remember this was the early days of Adobe Premiere, the software, and I also had a PC which I think from memory was running 256 megs of RAM, and that was a fully spec'd out PC which was possibly part of the problem. I also used Avid Media Composer for many years, which was a great program, and then I jumped to Final Cut Pro X back in about 2013 when I bought a MacBook Pro. All of these great editing platforms have come a long way since then, and also obviously so have computers and the specs of your computers you, you use these days. However, you could spend, for example, this is Adobe Premiere Pro 2020, and you could literally spend years using the software and never, and never really discover all of its true capabilities. Now I have just released a course on using Adobe Premiere Pro for editing real estate video and it is more aimed at those of you perhaps new to using Premiere. The course follows my exact and fairly simple workflow that I use when using Adobe Premiere for editing real estate video and the following excerpt is taken directly from this course and it is the chapter on using Adobe Premiere to color correct your real estate video footage. I'll leave a link in the description below this video to the course page where you can find out more about it and if it is for you. So here is the actual excerpt from the course. Righto, our edited sequence is actually looking pretty good now. We have pretty much trimmed and arranged our story to like we want it to look and feel. We've added music, we've added a title and a graphic on the end of it. Now the next sequence in my editing, editing flow if you like, and this is called color correcting. You'll hear a lot of people talking about color grading now. There's actually a difference between color correcting and color grading, and we're going to color correct. Color correcting is what you'll do 99% of your time versus color grading. In simplistic terms, color correcting, which is what we're going to do most of, is making the footage look as natural and as good as possible in terms of its brightness, its white balance, and its saturation. Now color grading is when you start adding a look or a feel or a mood to your footage. So to be honest with you, I very rarely do color grading to my real estate videos, and I spend 99% of my time doing color correcting, and that is generally that will generally see me through for most of what I need. So how do we color correct? The first thing you want to do is come up to the panel and switch to the color panel. Now let's click on the first clip and zoom in a little of the house here appearing behind the hedge. So just a quick explanation of what we're going on here. So everything is normal along the bins, our timeline and our picture. The only thing that's different now is we have some scopes here on the left and on the right we have our Lumetri color panel which is where we start making our adjustments. So the panel on the right is where we adjust and correct our color and on the left we use these scopes to help us eyeball it and get it looking as correct as possible. So the panel, the Lumetri color panel here on the right, which is what we will be working in, essentially, we, I'll shut this panel here, we have, you'll, be, you'll end up with basically these one, two, three, four, five, six panels and if you click on them they expand out. So the panels that you'll be using the most is the basic correction panel and the creative panel. So let's go to the basic correction panel. Now before we start doing anything, I'll just explain what we've got going on here in our Lumetri scopes. Scopes are a way of telling us how bright or dark our footage is or how colorful it is. So this preset here to get the same looking preset as I have and I'd, I'd recommend doing the same is click on the wee wrench menu here and go down here and you can turn these on and off as much as you like. For example, you can turn off the Parade RGB, and they are all a little bit, even even I have been, have been doing this for many years now, even, if, even these I find a little bit confusing, and I try and keep them as simple as possible. The one I'd recommend here is going to the presets, and then going down here to this one here, the Victor Scope YUV, Parade A RGB, and Waveform RGB. So the three scopes we've got here, this is your Waveform Monitor, this is your Parade RGB, and this is your Vector Scope. The one you're going to be using the most is this one here, and what this tells us is how bright or dark your footage is. You'll see here on the left 100 
and down the bottom is zero. Zero is black, and anything below black will just you lose all detail. So if the top is 100, 100 is bright white, and you'll see a little bit here where it gets crushed against the top there. Anything above 100, you will lose all detail, and it'll just be a white piece of video. The vector scope here, this is actually telling you a bit about your color and how much color you've got, and it's basically moving in the realms of the yellow, green, cyan, blue, magenta, and red. And so essentially you want your color to be in here. So if it's really bright, it'll start, you'll see the little graph start poking out the side. Now the RGB parade, I actually don't use that one very often at all, but some people balance their, their red, greens, and blues using this one. But I will generally use this waveform monitor the most to get our color correction looking good. So let's start. First clip on the timeline here actually looks pretty good. If you have come from perhaps a photography background, you'll be quite familiar with a lot of these controls here. For example, we can alter the, the temperature of our footage if it's too warm or too cold by dragging it up and down. So we can drag this up and down a little bit. And you'll see here over on the left here on our scopes, you can see the, the colors changing as we tweak out the colors. And I don't pay a whole lot of attention to that. I eyeball this a lot as well. So let's warm that up a little bit perhaps. Now I often find my GH5 has a little bit of magenta tint, so let's drag that slider away from the magenta a little bit, just a, just a fraction. Now to see what you've done here, you can turn it off, on, very subtle so far. Now exposure, you'll see here's a, a little bit of a tricky situation, we've got bright against the bricks. Now if I lift the exposure, you'll see it here on my waveform crushing against the top. So I don't think it really needs much exposure there much exposure gain. Contrast. Contrast is a way of stretching your blacks to your white. Now for example if we really knock the contrast right back here you'll see that everything is kind of squished in the middle which or in the middle as opposed to the the bottom and the top whereas if I stretch contrast the other way blacks are really black whites are really white. So often it, sometimes we it's good to take the contrast back just a fraction to even out our exposure. Highlights I'll drag those back a little bit so we retain we retain a little bit in our bright areas. Shadows, I lift them a little bit. Whites, I often like to lift just a little bit to brighten the image. Now blacks, now see if I drag the black down, it hits zero, and black, that means the black areas of that image are right there. Sometimes I like to lift the blacks just a little bit off the bottom. Saturation, now my GH5, I've got it shooting a little bit under saturated, so let's add a little bit of saturation. Maybe around about 110, 113, 115. Let's toggle that on and off. So that's before, that's after. Right, oh, that's that shot done. Now it's all about speed and turning around our edits. So let's move on to the next shot. I'm pretty happy with that. Okay, drone. Now this shot needs a bit of work. I always find it a little bit tricky to balance my shots. And the other thing I'm trying to do with color correction, if I'm using two different cameras, like for example, I'm using my GH5 and my drone here, and I'm trying to match them up. And it's actually quite tricky matching my drone to my GH5, but let's persevere. Moving on to the next shot, click on the clip. Now, if we look over here in our waveform monitor, there's not a lot of bright areas. So let's lift the exposure on this one. Just starting to push out the top there. And I might add a little bit of shadow detail, lift that up a little as well. Now I'm going to warm it with the temperature slider as well, because I think it's just a little bit. Now, exposure, contrast. I'll leave that there. Whites, I like to raise those a little. And I'm going to bring back those highlights a little just to... So that front shot of the, or the bright sun in the front of that house doesn't blow out too much. Blacks. Might drag them a little. See if you drag blacks right up, they start to give it quite a faded look, which I quite like a faded look, but not in this instance, because we're trying to do it, we're trying to present this house in a very, you know, its best possible light. So let's drag them down to about there. Saturation, I'll give it a little bit of saturation about, about there. So let's have a look. This is bef that's before. And that's after. So I'm quite happy with that. So we've gone from there. Now you can see what's going on here. This shot looks great. Quite a different looking color balance there, isn't it? So 
it's quite a bit of a difference here between these two shots. It's a bit of a tough one because they're both shot from a very similar angle. Sometimes if they were shot from a completely different angle, it's easier. You don't have to match them so hard. Now, let's pull the green. It looks like it's too much magenta still on my GH5. So let's pull, pull it towards the green side a little bit here in that shot. That's better. So that's a lot. See how that's a lot closer now? Right. Right, here we go. Happy with that. To that. To a big dramatic view shot. Now looking at my waveform, it's pretty good actually. You could probably do with just a little bit of exposure, bump up in exposure. Sometimes I like a little bit more contrast on landscape shots. Highlights, I'll bring that back, protect them a little bit. Shadows, I don't think I need anything much there. A little bit of white. And then a little bit of color saturation, about 108. Now let's have a look before. So here's before, here's after. A little, it's quite subtle, but if you watch the brown hill there, just adds just a little bit more brightness to it. So I'm, I'm happy with that shot. Moving into the house. Now often what I like to do for the interior of a property, I like to find a typical looking shot first, and then let's just copy those settings as a starting point. So let's go to, for example, this shot here. Right, that's our interior. Let's, I'm kind of happy there with the, the white balance. Let's lift the exposure a bit on the shot. Highlights, I'll pull those back just a fraction. Shadows, I like to lift the shadows a little just to get a little bit more detail in there. Whites a little bit. Now blacks. Now I'm a fan of, now watch this, if I pull the blacks right back, look at the back of the couch and the television there, they're black as black. So I actually like to lift my blacks or my lower tones there a little bit. And if you look on my wave, my wave form monitor here, I like my blacks to be in around, I like the bottom of the picture to be about there, which is about 8 Eight percent. Now let's add a little bit of color, probably about one fifteen again for the my GH five. Now just have another play with the contrast. So that's before, that's after. Much better. Just I like the interiors to look bright and warm, and I don't like the blacks to be too crushed. And that's a personal preference and you will develop your own style, and that's the way I like to do it. So I'm quite happy with that shot. Now, to make our life a little bit quicker, what we can do with that shot there, for example, we can Control or Command C or Control C on a Windows, and let's copy those settings we use there. Let's say, for example, apply it to the next three clips. So I'm highlighting the next three clips. I'm going to go to Edit, Paste Attributes, and I want it to paste there, my effects, my Lumetri color. We'll untick these things. So all I want it to do is apply these effects, which is our color effects. So I go OK. So now when we come to these shots, they've already got the they have already got the similar shots or the similar color grading to what we or color correcting we've just done. So let's have a look in there. So there is before, there is after. Pretty happy with that shot. This now this shot possibly could use a little bit, it's a little bit warm because we've got some tungsten lights here. Let's just drop the, the temperature back a little on it. Before, after. Yep, happy with that. And that's a quick way I find, for example, if all I usually balance one drone shot and then I copy and paste all those color correction shots to my other drone shots, and same for the interior. I'll find a typical interior shot, color correct it and then copy and paste those settings to the other ones and then go through and check each one as I go. So for example, that's probably a little bit too dark. Let's lift the exposure. And the black's not too bad. A little bit too warm. Let's just knock the temp color temperature back a little bit on those ones. So there's before, there's after. Happy with that. Same with this one. There's before, there's after. I'd like a little bit more contrast. And, and if I look at my wave form there, I could probably even bring that up a little bit higher if I wanted to. So let's lift it up. Let's add just a little bit more contrast in this one. Saturation, yep. So 
There's before, there's after. Right, now let's just quickly whip back to this shot here. And this is a funny shot because we've started on an exterior, kind of blue and a little bit cold outdoors into our warm interior. And then we settle down into this shot here. So my thought process on that one is what is the money shot here? So the money shot to me in this shot is that one there, which I am going to take the same as that one there. So let's copy that one again. Command C on my Mac. Let's copy those Lumetri pre, uh, color correction adjustments we did and let's paste it into that clip. Okay, I just rendered that shot so it plays back a bit quicker and you can probably hear my MacBook whirring away there in the background. Let's have a look at that shot now. Yep, quite happy with that. I'm more interested in, I know there's some, it's a little bit colder out here. A little bit too warm in there. But I'm more interested in seeing how the end of the shot, this part, goes into the next shot. And that's fine. Actually, if anything, let's bring the blacks down a little bit more on that shot. Perhaps a little bit more contrast. Happy with that. Right, now I'm not going to go through every clip and bore you, so what I'll do is I will just scroll through here and look at shots that might be a little bit unique. Now I know I have a couple in here that need a little bit more attention. So these are pretty much view shots indoor, outdoors. Now this shot, right, the bathroom shot. Because I have my white balance locked on a daylight setting, it's very yellow. So easily fixed. We go into our color correction and we are going to dial back the temperature to make it look a little bit more natural about there. Bring the exposure up. And I'm going to bring those blacks down a little. A little bit more contrast in that one. A bit more white. Right. Here's before. There's after. Happy with that. And, it, and you see there how it next shot looks good as well, even though I haven't done anything to that yet. And then another shot here. So this shot here was a handheld gimbal walking down the hallway. Again, I'm on a daylight white balance, so it's looking too tungsten-y. So I would let's lift the exposure a little bit. A little bit in the shadows. But we are going to bring our color temperature back down. Not too bad. Now let's undo this and I'll show you another trick here. See the wee white balance selector here? I can click on that, find a spot that looks white, click on that and it'll automatically adjust the white balance. It's not too bad, but I think that actually looks a little bit too cool for me so I would still warm that up just a smidge about there. So there's before, there's after. Righto, I am going to go away now and I will color correct all these shots and then come on back. Righto, I have gone through and adjusted all those clips. So essentially my order of color correction is basically go through, check the brightness and darkness of your shot or the exposure. I then will adjust the color temperature a little bit to keep it nice and warm or neutral. And then maybe a little bit of contrast and lift the shadow a little bit in the dark areas on the interiors. And that is essentially pretty much it. I had a touch of saturation, not too much. And if you look here, for example, on this shot here, there's a bright yellow and you'll see here up in my vector scope that the yellow is almost over that line, which means it's almost too much saturation. So I don't overdo it. So if I show you there's before, there's after. So just a bit brighter and a little bit more color to the shots and that's it. And that's it for color correction. And with practice, you will get quicker and quicker at it. Mm -hmm.